Good afternoon, beloved community. This is Pak Hu Heng. I'm the Chief Program Officer for Vote Run Lead. And I am starting our uh, conversation um, about what's happened in Minneapolis the last couple of days. My guest today um, will be an amazing organizer um, who has been on the ground and who has providing a lot of essential services for our protesters and our, um, our community activists. Um, so I'm really excited to be interviewing and, and hearing stories from um, Wintana Malikin. And I'm going to try to get her um, on Instagram Live. As soon as she joins us, I'll um, give her permission to come on board. So we're just waiting for um, our guest today. Um, just a reminder for those of you who are just checking in. Trying to see, okay, great. I'm trying to see here. So I'm looking for Minnesota Voices. And here you go. Great. So Wintana will be joining us in a little bit. Hi, Wintana. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I know that you're really busy, so I so appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So um, for everybody, this is Wintana Melikin. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yep. Um, Wintana is the executive director of Minnesota Voices, which is a nonprofit that works to um, engage other nonprofits in the engagement process. Um, but Wintana has also been a community activist and an organizer for a long time. And these past couple of days, she has really been at the front line of everything that's happening in Minneapolis. And so, Wintana, um, I know we don't have that much time with you, but I was wondering, since, since you have such a unique perspective, um, can you tell us what happened, you know, a week ago at the 38th and Chicago, George Floyd? Like, can we start there? And can you tell us? Because I'm concerned that there are real stories that are not being, you know, lifted or not being told. And so our stories are being co-opted. So can you tell us, like, what happened to George uh, Floyd? Last week. Yeah, yeah. And I know um, for a lot of Americans, uh, folks think, you know, it started that afternoon on the corner of 38th and Chicago. Um, but this moment started with, uh, you know, the day that Columbus landed in the Caribbean. And I would even say earlier than that with um, Europe and um, colonialism and slavery and all the systems of white supremacy. Um, but specifically that specific moment, um, um, and I could honestly say there's been so many different stories that I've heard, but from what I've collected, um, George Floyd may or may not is unconfirmed used a, a fake $20 bill. And I just, just to add, like, I've done that in the past completely unknowingly, you know, you've gone to a gas station, they're like, this isn't real. And you're like, what? You just put it in your pocket or they throw it out. Like, this is not a, you know, this happened to me at a gas station. Um, and, um, and yeah, and so the state law, um, is that when someone presents a counterfeit bill, you call the police, the venue has said traditionally when that happens, police ask them where they got it. They usually take it away. That's, you know, that's what at least the owners expected, but we should always be cautious about coordinating with police departments. Um, I always encourage folks only use them when it's an absolute dire emergency and you don't have an alternative to safety other than uh, calling them. Um, and so um, the police showed up, they assaulted him. Uh, the video that isn't going viral is the one where the officers put him in the backseat of a car and pulled him down and beat him. Um, from there, they lay him on the ground because obviously he's being beat, he should be moving. Um, they laid him on the ground and three officers held him down. One officer watched and stopped folks from stepping in and they put uh, their foots on his neck for eight minutes. And I also just to take a step back, I wish I would have said a trigger warning and to folks on on the notes. I'm sorry if that got too graphic too fast. And I'm sorry that I didn't. Um, I, I'm sorry I didn't start with that. Um, but I hope folks are okay. And um, I just want to add that. 
Um, also, just want to add my pronouns are she, her. I didn't share that either. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to just say those things too. Um, and yeah, and so folks witnessed this. Um, and I just want to add what happened to him is not an anomaly. It is uh, a black person dies at the hands of the police every 24 hours. Um, there have been multiple deaths this week in various cities all across the country. This is actually traditional police behavior. Um, this one just got caught on video um, and it actually just happened at a time where this country is, um, is struggling, you know, every aspect of it. Um, and I think another thing that we should note is like, there's a reason why Minnesota started a national moment. And that is because Minnesota has the worst racial disparities in the country. Um, most folks think that, you know, we were rated the best parks rated the best schools, like that only applies to white people. That does not apply to communities of color. That does not apply to black people. It does not apply to Hmong people. It does not apply to Latino folks. Um, and and that's why we're, we've become this, you know, uh, people often talk about the South and all of that. The, the North is actually where some of the worst uh, racism you'll ever experience is happening up here. Um, and that's why it became such a big moment because folks just couldn't take it anymore. You know, um, just a few weeks before this incident, our state began to give out small business resources because of COVID with almost none of those resources going to um, businesses of color, period. They just didn't, they went everywhere else. Um, and we continue to, to enlarge the disparities. Um, I think about an institution like Vote Run Lead uh, Minnesota has some of the longest probation periods in the entire country. I think we come second to Florida. Uh, we have a law that doesn't allow people on felony probation to vote while on probation. If we have the longest probation periods, we're going to end up creating um, a crisis in our democracy, and we have. So right now, one in four black men don't have access to the ballot because of that. that those are folks that can't vote for the amazing women you guys run for office. Those are the folks that can't vote for their sisters, their moms, their aunts because their, their right to vote has been taken away from what is, you know, considered to be the best state, you know? Um, when Tom, I, I, yeah. I want to say I really hear you because that's something that we struggled with is we've been training women to run for like the past 20 years, right? Yep. But the truth is, is that alongside making sure that we are building capacity among women, we also have to issue environment, right? We have to promote democratic reform because the two are hand in hand. Absolutely. And we talk about how patriarchy is in bed with white supremacy. That's right. You can't dismantle patriarchy if you're not also example and dismantle white supremacy. Absolutely. So George Floyd was killed by the police on Monday. And for some reason, the, the video didn't really become viral until Tuesday. And I remember on Tuesday evening, there was already kind of a rally at 38th in Chicago. And then things started moving or um, bifurcating into um, the the protest in front of the third precinct. Can you tell us what happened there? Yeah, I can tell you what happened because I was I, I was there. Um, I've been an organizer for the last decade, particularly um, around issues around police brutality and election reform and things like that. Um, folks showed up. They were peaceful. They were kind. Um, and I just want to add, like, folks don't have to be that. If folks want to be angry, they get to be angry because we're talking about a system that has enslaved people. We're talking about a system that has um, completely destroyed its immigration system. And so people get to respond the way they want to respond. Uh, but I was there and um, and I'll just, you know, just a personal note. I went, I was there for, I want to say maybe 30 minutes. I parked my car and somebody actually took a bold left around a group of organizers and slammed into my car and destroyed it. So I haven't had a car since the first protest. Um, and um, it, interesting enough is like they hit my car and, and, um, and, I, and I didn't even know it, um, but I had been at the protest and I was watching the police jump, like literally jump from behind trees, jump behind buildings, macing people. None of it made sense. I was like, why are they so extra right now? Like, why is it so extreme? Um, and I started walking back to my car. I had my puppy, Tarzan. Um, you guys can follow him on, uh, he has got, he's got an Instagram, Tarzan, my, my dog Tarzan on Instagram. Don't worry, but, okay. um, he was with me and I was like, I can't, I was like, I can't have my dog here. Like I really, I was like, this is not a thing I can do. So I went back and my car was totaled. Um, and my car was like de completely dented in, like undrivable. And then the police started shooting rubber bullets. They started throwing gas and I just drove my car off as is door bent it in, had to go in through the passenger side. 
and the police were extremely violent. They were extremely dangerous. Um, and it just continued. It continued nonstop. It continued nonstop for the next few days. And um, as we continue to not see justice, like the four officers were fired, um, but that's not enough. We need to be talking about how do we actually divest from this department that has a long history of being extremely violent and actually invest in community. So we, this, the city of Minneapolis, I, I, about a third of their budget goes to the police department. What would it look like if a third of their budget actually went to schools and healthcare? Um, what would it look like where, if we fully funded our women's shelters and fully funded our domestic abuse system so that a woman never has to actually call an officer in a system in a, in a situation and can actually get help so that she never has to just have a guy show up, hardly believe her and leave. You know, that, those are the things we're trying to reimagine. Um, and that's kind of what what has been happening. And that's that's what it bubbled up to. People didn't just want four officers fired or even four officers arrested. We, we need change. We need we need something to happen. And um, something I've been telling people that they need to remember is that um, the Voting Rights Act happened after massive unrest, massive. We're talking about thousands of cities began protesting and then a uniformed uh, policy came about. You know, we're watching candidates right now really talk about actual reform um, um, and actual systems change. Like this is a reality, like we are going to win. Like the, the world has had enough, we have had enough. Um, and I think that, um, I think that's what happened. I think people gave up and I think the police and white supremacy and the systems at play are holding on to their last grip on America. Um, they are holding on to the last grip of, of um, power that they have. And I know very much it can feel like we're losing, but we're actually, we're winning. When we resist, we are winning. You know, I've been looking, you know, I'm a data nerd, looking at all these polls and it says 58% of Americans are unhappy with the police. You know, less than 4% believe this officer should be released. Like this is, this is different. You know, we are in a political moment. Um, and my message to like vote run lead is like run, like run. I had a candidate text me this morning and says, filing deadline is five. Should I do it? I said, yes, go file fill it out like that's it you have until five and we actually minister of voice actually worked on a law because of covid to get a reform where you actually don't even have to go down to the office you can register to vote you can register as a candidate right on the secretary of state site I've, i'm like thank god we did that and i'm telling everyone just sign up just write your name in we'll figure yeah. it out later um, I, and they're doing it yeah i do want to talk to you um, about like mail-in ballots and all that stuff because mm -hmm. i think that is a path for us to reform not just reform to transform but i also i i want to um i still feel like a lot of these stories are not being heard so i know that you were on the 35w bridge so can you tell us about what happened there yeah so i taking a step back i actually wasn't on the bridge i actually was like two blocks <laughs> away had zero plans on getting on the bridge and I have no issue with disruption. I completely support it. But I actually came. I was. It wasn't too far from me. I was walking my dog, Tarzan. Tarzan was with me again. And I was. I had zero plans on being disruptive or even getting on a freeway. I was like, I literally came to be a part of a peaceful, joyful community experience for us to, you know, honor the ancestor we got in George Floyd. And um, and then the car, the big tan military. Um, National Guard car drove by and they were like Mason people and I'm moving up on a hill officer took his gas can and faced it down to my puppy sprayed him in his face and then uh, luckily there was someone I recognized they let me go inside their home um, got my puppy together and then I went back outside walked uh, about a block away got close to the freeway I was on and then MPD threw a gas tank at us so, like they have these little there's these little containers and they throw them and then when they hit the ground they like pop and gas comes out and they just threw them and I was like I can't I, I recorded a bit of it and then I just had to go back to my to my puppy um, and so I went back in the house and then I went home and I shared it and I explained what happened um, but I think the thing that folks need to note is that um, like we are trying to create systems change people are not in the streets for fun People are not ransacking Target and these corporations for fun. No one is finding joy in this moment. No one wants to risk their life during a health crisis of this capacity when Black people are already the dying at the highest rates. We're doing it because this is a country that has literally enslaved people and doesn't pay reparations. This is a country that has a staff of 700 um, some odd folks on payroll that get away with murder. 
um, this is not fun. This is not a choice. This is because people have no other option. And there is a, a quote from MLK that um, rioting is the voice of the unheard, you know, um, or that other quote of like, you know, you don't go into shark infested water unless your home is more dangerous. I don't go into these um, into these protests because I think it's fun. I go into these protests because if I stay home and do nothing, a police officer may kill my brother tomorrow. And like, that's why that's why this is happening. That's why we're doing this work. And that's that's the moment that we're in. Thank you so much. For um, you had talked a little bit about like, how do we transform, right? How do we learn from this moment to transform? And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit more about mail-in ballots or voting, because I know that yeah. that's the blood of your organization. Yeah, so voting is my jam. That is like my thing. Um, and I just want to be transparent. I don't see voting as the only key to all of this. I actually see it as, as, as one of the keys. Um, and what I tell people is that we're a civic engagement organization and protesting is just as much your civic duty as voting is. And so um, I didn't, I, when, la, when last week started, I thought I was gonna be talking to people about absentee voting and, and I'd have my regular weekly calls with the Secretary of State's office and doing things like that. Um, and then it turned into a moment where we had to step up and provide security for our community and, and, and get people their, you know, their pharmacy needs and all of that. Um, but what Minnesota Voice does on a traditional, on a normal week um, is that we actually work to make voting more accessible to communities of color, low income folks, queer and trans folks. Um, and uh, what we have actually been doing for the last couple months is working to, um, uh, we've been working to reform some of the voting policies that we have right now. So Minnesota has absentee voting where you can like request a ballot. Um, that's not good enough. What we need to do is actually mail a ballot to every voter in the in the state. Um, Minnesota has this rule where if you are a, um, there are certain townships that are so small and so far from locations, they automatically get a ballot. About I think it's about 130,000 people do that. A few more cities have joined on, um, but it's unfair to allow these these townships to have that privilege, to have that right, and not to afford that right to the entire state during one of the most pandemic. Uh, dangerous pandemics of our lifetime and during a, a time where the police are um, and so we've been working to advocate for that but, um, we're hoping that um, the state legislature during the special session steps up and moves and makes that a policy um, the other option is for the secretary of state I'm sorry not the secretary of state the governor to do an executive order and then the last option is the ACLU and other folks have filed a lawsuit requiring that and so we're hoping that one of those works. Um, but if not, we'll still be working with our partners to do online registration and online ballot requests. Um, like I said, I don't think voting is the only option, but it's the option I work on because I have the, the, the capacity to do it. And um, I encourage folks to find the lane that's for you. Not everyone needs to be um, a radical in the streets. Not everyone needs to be, you know, doing community watch. Like people need to do what makes sense for them because if you do the wrong role, you just put folks in more danger um, and you should be consistently gaining new skills and trying new things, but um, find what makes sense for you. And, and that thing for me is making sure that post the pandemic, post this moral crisis, we have an actual fair and secure elections November and August, the August primary. Yeah. So, yeah. And today is actually a primary in a lot of states. So when yeah. talking, I've been following you on Facebook and you're, you're just at the front of mind you know, in, in all these spaces. And I'm wondering, like, how are you, like, like for real, like, how are you doing? Um, you know, I'm, uh, so I actually took yesterday to stay in and I didn't go out at all. I don't think I've been outside for 24 hours actually. Um, I was on I was on driver watch at night in case anyone called me to be a driver. Um, but I am okay. Um, there's this Asada Shakur um, chant, um, but it talks about um, it is our duty to fight for our freedom. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Um, and it's just extremely true. Um, I'm Eritrean, I talk about that a lot. Um, oh, Lord, you're going to make me cry. Oh, my God. I'm a crier already, though. But, um, yeah, I just, it's my duty. It's my purpose. It's my calling. Um, and I'm Eritrean. I come from, I come from, like, really powerful people that have, like, fought for their liberation and they won. 
I have a grandfather who um, who lives in the States who works at a hospital and he's like consistently cleaning up rooms after COVID patients. But um, before he did that, he was a revolutionary in the air train revolution. He, he fought um, for my freedom, you know, he fought. I, I wouldn't be able to call myself an Eritrean unless he did that. Um, Eritrea won its war in 1991. I moved to the States in 89. You know, technically I was born in Ethiopia and I get to freely call myself an Eritrean because of the, of the work my, um, my family did. And so at bare minimum, what I can do is um, extend that work and provide protections for them while they're in the States. And so, yeah, I just see it as my duty. Um, but I'm gonna be very honest. I definitely do self care. Like, I'm all about my self care. I like I tell I'm very bougie. I believe that black folks deserve nice things. You know, being an anti capitalist does not mean we all get gruel. It means we all get champagne. That's the way I process it. So I take care of myself. I got a bottle of rose water right there on the table. Like I do not compromise. Like, no, I take care of myself. I take care of my people. I do not think like living in a just world means we all get nothing equally. I think it means we all get what we deserve. Um, and that's the way I process it. And that's what I do to take care of myself. I'm, I tell my team this all the time, like you can't take care of other people if you don't take care of yourself. And so, yeah, yeah, so that's what I do. So I'm doing okay. I'm like, you know, I take care of myself. Batana, I see you. I see your brilliance. I see your light. Um, I see your freedom and your clarity, and I want to thank you for giving us your spirit. I know that you are really busy, and um, I just want to thank you. And I want future generations, I know, you know, Watana Malikin, um, it's the name we're going to remember. So thank you so much. Thank um, you, everyone. Be safe, and make sure you vote in November. Make sure you vote in August. Register. Sign up to support um, uh, issue you care about. We're a nonpartisan organization. I always tell people, um, I wouldn't be an organizer if I didn't plug us, uh, but I always tell people that um, being a nonpartisan organization means um, we don't pick parties, we, we pick our people. And um, that's what we are, that's what we do. And please, 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 like during this moment, do the work to help your community and your neighbors and keep folks safe, but also um, do the work to organize, make sure you know what you're voting for, who you're voting for, how you're voting, make sure other folks know that um, that is like the easiest thing you can do right now. Um, and please like step up um, and like make the magic happen. And so I just, I just have to say that and, um, and, uh, and everyone be safe. Thank you so much, Montana. Your thank grandpa you. is very, very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everybody. Bye. So you heard it from Montana Malik and one of our young leaders, the future um, of this democracy. Please join us in the next hour at four o'clock. Will you be hearing from uh, Senator Patricia Torres Ray, and later on Andrea Jenkins, who is the vice president of the Minneapolis City Council. And then later this afternoon, you'll be hearing from Ilan Omar, who is leading us in Congress as a Congresswoman for the fifth congressional district. For all of our friends and supporters and allies who just witnessed those amazing words from Wintana, thank you. <laughs>